In this video, we're going to talk about accessible safaris in Africa coming up right after this. So today I'm here with Keith Johnson from Vambua, Africa, and we're going to talk about accessible safaris. So welcome to the interview. Good evening, Kenneth. Let me just give you some idea of my background. I spent 40 years in Africa, in Botswana and Zambia. I have traveled to 26 countries on a regular basis to Africa. And, you know, Africa has always been you know, part of my life. And, you know, when I moved to the UK, I came to realize how many people were missing out on, on Africa, especially those with accessible needs. And I paired up with Claire Minchin, who's a social worker, and we formed Bumboya Africa. Okay, so tell me what Vumbua means, actually. Vumbua is Swahili for discover. So discover Africa. And so I understand you have some partners that you work with. Yeah, the company has four directors. Claire Minchin is one. She is in charge of all accessible tours. Then we have Clive Buckley here in the UK, who is technology director. Then we have a branch in South Africa which is run by a lady called Brenda Dornback. And Claire Minchin is also a director there. I'm a director, but I'm not an owner. I'm operations director and I do all the marketing as well. Okay. The, com the company was started in 2019, March, 2019. And we specialize in accessible tours. Oh, well, very nice. You're kind of like me. I started being a travel agent in January of 2020. <laughs> okay, it wasn't yeah. the best timing. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it's been terrible for the last, what, nearly two years? <laughs> okay, yes. but it gave you lots of time to prepare, right? You, you should be well yeah, prepared yes. now as tourism yes. opens back up. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. That's what um, I've been doing, trying to go and see and record video now. So let's talk about you know, in my mind, I don't think of Africa as being an accessible place and I'm learning very quickly that I'm wrong. Mm. So what are the countries that you offer? Where do you do accessible tours? Okay. We, we do accessible tours in South Africa. We do tours, uh, accessible tours in Botswana, Kenya. We do Tanzania and Uganda as well, but they are limited. Kenya, Botswana, and South Africa are pretty geared up when it comes to accessible travel but we are working with camps in tanzania and uganda helping them convert to become more accessible and we're trying to spread through a whole lot of africa because we actually offer 26 countries and unfortunately we can't do all 26 countries on accessible tours but in the future we're hoping that will be a reality well, that's amazing. Part of the reason I asked you to be on the show today was because a lot of people that travel with challenges might not think that Africa was doable and especially mm -hmm. a safari in Africa. I mean, that just doesn't sound compatible with a wheelchair, but as we've talked prior to the show, I've learned that I'm wrong and that's okay. I've been wrong before. So let's talk about the accessibility side of the business to start with. What are some of the things that you guys look for and how do you help companies work on becoming accessible? Well, what we do is we visit lodges and hotels and camps, and we take a look at what they offer at the moment. And, you know, the feeling is you know, it's expensive, but it's actually not really that expensive to convert because we had a client in Tanzania who turned around and said to us, but you no, know, a ramp is expensive to put in. But once you've got a ramp, Everybody uses it. Nobody uses the stairs. So it's, it's not that expensive. And then and the thing we found as well, especially the hotels in, in Africa, they say, oh, we've got one accessible room. But you can have 10 accessible rooms. It doesn't have to go to people that have accessible problems. Anybody can use that room. So I, I don't know why they're only 
convert one room to what they call accessible, when they could have all their rooms accessible. And we're trying to change the whole way of thinking in Africa. I, I can understand needing to change the way of thinking. I'm just thinking about something else. We get a lot of people get, getting hold of us and say, oh, we're accessible. We can take the seats out of a safari vehicle. But it's not just about taking seats out of safari vehicles. It's about the ramps. And they say, oh, we could just put a ramp. It's not just about that. But you've got to have a ramp that's not too steep. It's, and you've got to be able to tie down or secure the wheelchair. Yeah, so, I... I had a conversation with a gentleman and he, he was talking about the fact that they can just pick people up and carry them and put them like in a boat or something. Yeah. That may work for some people. Some people yeah. may be comfortable with that, mm. but I know a lot of people, and I think my wife would be in that list that might not be comfortable. They yeah. don't want to be manhandled around. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot to think about. And, and again, it's interesting because what I find is that what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for oh, one. For no, that's very true. Yeah, that's very true. We get inquiries about going to see the gorillas in Uganda. And we tell them the only way to get up there is they carry you. And most of the people say, no, forget it. We don't want to do that. Because there is no other way to do it. I mean, you couldn't put a cable car. You couldn't put a ramp. Yeah. You know, for some, it's, you know, worth, in inverted commas, it's worth the risk. Just to see the gorillas. Africa will always have those kind of problems, yeah. but we trying to you know, offer the big five to everybody. We're trying to get them on a, a, a mobile, you know, tented camp, which has all become possible now where 10 years ago, it wasn't possible. So as we talked before, there's so many changes and so many things that, like I said, that I wouldn't have thought possible that mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that are possible. So let's talk about an example of a safari. Let's say um, that we're going to do a safari in Botswana. Okay. The safari in Botswana is a tented camp. It's a, a tented safari. So the tents, what happens is the tents move with you, but they've had to adapt everything in the tents. They've got mobile flooring for wheelchairs, which they move from camp to camp. They've got hard floors in the tents. They've got director's chairs, which are canvas that have they've been converted to toilets. They've got showers with the same sort of thing, but it's all converted to what you would get in a hotel. It's just not the luxury, but it's, it's all there. You've got wet rooms, you've got everything you need, but in a more basic way. Well, you know, that's one of those things that I wouldn't have thought it was possible, but I think that to me, I would think that's really a part of the the safari experience oh, yes yes to be able to think, be out and stay yeah. in the bush yeah that's what we felt you know people come to africa to experience africa if you want five-star accommodation you can go anywhere in the world to get five-star accommodation but you know one thing about africa is to experience the bush to experience the culture the bushman you experience the bushman in the kalahari in botswana that have been living that way for thousands and thousands of years. And it's all part of, of you know, doing this far in Africa. So I'm, I'm going to go to B Botswana. So I don't know anything right now about Botswana. I'm sorry, I didn't do any research. So where am I going to fly into? And what's day one going to look like? Well, you, you'd have to fly into Johannesburg. And then from Johannesburg, you'd fly into Mount. Mount is 25, no, 40 minutes from the Delta. Okavongo Delta, you would spend a night there, two nights there, depending on the client. And then you'd go across, virtually across, you know, the northern part of Botswana. You do Maremi, Savuti, Makari, Kari, Miasopans, all the way up to Kasani, which is right up in the north on the Zambian border. And it can vary. It can vary from seven days to 10 days. You know, each safari is designed around the client because each client as we mentioned before each client has different needs so okay. you know, we don't really have set itineraries each itinerary right. is designed for the group so you mentioned the delta and so if we started in the delta what would we do in the delta you, you go for a morning safari out into the bush just you know, with some wildlife and then you'd spend some time on the delta itself in a boat 
and the boat has a ramp so you can go on with your wheelchair if you you know in a wheelchair and you stay in your wheelchair so in, in the boat you'll be on the water for again it depends on on the client but you can spend up to a day two days on on the okavango because Botswana, the Okawanga Delta and around the mound, there's a lot of water there, especially in the wet season. You spend a lot of time going through water. Okay, so what would we see while we're on the water? What are some of the things that would be interesting that we would see and then maybe encounter? You'd, you know, you'd come across, you know, herds of elephants. You'd, you'd find a lot of hippo. It's, a, it's one of the only places in the world where you'll find lions that swim. Because there's so much water, lions have to get from A to B. They've learned, they've adapted to water, where most lions will stay away from water. I've had cats, you try to put them in the water to give them a bath or something, you you get injured. <laughs> exactly. It's one of the only places in the world that you'll see a lion that swims. There's so much to see. It's, I would say it's probably one of the most beautiful you know, countries in the world when it comes to safari. Okay. So let's say we've done a couple of days on the water. Where do we go from there? What's our next stop going to be in? What's there? You go to Marengi Game Reserve, which is by safari vehicle. That's just game viewing during the day. You work your way through Marengi and then on towards Chobe, which is another game reserve. That part of Botswana is the Kalahari Desert, so it's very sandy. So you don't go anywhere very quickly, very fast. And you work your way all the way up through, and it's so different. Maremi is different to Chobi. Chobi runs along the Zambezi and the, which is a mighty river. It's a huge, it's a massive you know, river. You see lots of crocodile, lots of hippo, but okay. it's, it's something you have to experience. Yeah. You've got me sold already. So now all I gotta do is sell my banker. <laughs> Maybe I can find somebody to buy my house. Um, and just kind of poking at my conception of the expense of some of these things. Mm. So uh, let's talk about life in camp. So we get there. I know you said that the camp follows us or goes ahead of us. Yeah. So we get to camp, we get off. Let's talk about dining arrangements. We talked about bush toilets. What they do then is you sit around the fire. So everyone mixes you know, with a guide. So you talk about the day ahead, the night, the evening, the next day. So you have a fire pit in the middle. And you all sit around that and that's where you have your dinner it, it seldom rains in botswana and the sky is beautiful it's always full of stars you know it's very communal so you sit around the fire you discuss what you've seen for the day you discuss the next day you talk about the rest of the journey what you're going to see you know, as you go along and what you hopefully will experience okay so let's go back to the meal so uh, we're in the bush, so what are we going to have for dinner? Are we having crocodile or uh, no. steak or? No, you don't normally eat venison. You normally eat normal everyday pork and, um, but also before you go, we will ask you your eating habits, what you don't eat, what you do eat, what you want to experience. Game meat is on the menu but occasionally, but it's not an everyday thing. Okay. So we don't have somebody that's going out and, and, and shooting something and bringing it in. No, that, doesn't it doesn't happen. that does not happen. What about, I would think that the fresh fruits and vegetables that are available there are probably different than, than you have in, for example, in London, or I'd have in North Carolina. So what are the things that would perhaps be in the realm of normal, but new to people that are visiting? I think the only thing you might find that's different is in Southern Africa, you get thing, a thing called gem squash. Other than that, there's no difference. I won't say everything, but a lot of things in Botswana is imported because it's desert. Okay. But it all comes from South Africa, or mainly from South Africa. Okay. So you get your everyday gross you know, vegetables, carrots. Um, i trying to think, there's nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, because some of the places I've traveled, there are things that are local that you can only find there, but they can be very good. I was, I was talking to uh, somebody about Grenada, and there's some fruit uh, that grows on Grenada that are not typically found other places. So mm -hmm. you find these new fruits, because I'm a new thing person, so I just didn't know. 
I mean, you get things like mangoes, which you probably won't get in America, you don't get in the UK. You'll try mapani worms, but they're only in season, so that's what the locals eat. You've got to try those if you're there in the right time, which is around September. What else? Um, trying to think. Watermelons. I can't talk about in the US, but here in the UK, watermelons are tiny. You know, you go to Africa, watermelons are about two foot long. Yeah. They're massive. I live far enough south that we have a long growing season and we get big watermelons here. And But yeah, I, I lived up north in the, the cold country and you didn't have time to mature big fruits. So you had to grow things that matured quickly and they were much smaller. And, mm. you know, yeah. All right. So what's the, the bedding arrangement like when we're living in the bush? The bedding arrangement, you live on a camp bed, but they are designed so you can put a fit a wheelchair next to it so you can get off the wheelchair onto your bed. They're specifically designed for accessible travel. Okay. So everything, everything that's needed, uh, mobile hoist can, can fit under the beds. Everything anybody would ever want or needed is taken into consideration. Okay. So I, I mentioned before we started, I, I travel with a CPAP. So power is available for people that have scooters or CPAPs. Yes. What we'll have to do is normally they turn the generators off, you know, 10 o'clock at night. But if people have medicines that they need stored, then they will keep those for you and run it for you. They will keep a generator running 24 hours. Okay. But right. generally speaking, they go off at 10 o'clock and they come back on at five in the morning. Okay. And for the typical person that this works for, is, I, I would assume that early morning game drives and early morning yes. looking and then maybe a rest in the middle of the day and then evening kinds of things. And the best time to see game is in the morning, early morning and the evening. So you would go out before breakfast, you would go get, you know, game viewing for breakfast and then come back to camp for breakfast and then spend some time in camp, depending on where you are, spend time in camp or go on a cruise on Okavongo. But during lunchtime, you'd be back at camp and then you'd go out again later afternoon. Okay. And back right. in the end. And so as we go through the whole Botswana safari, what are the animals you mentioned? Lions and hippos? Well, you should see lion. You should see leopard. Or the chances are, you, you've got a good chance of seeing leopard, buffalo, uh, elephant. There are rhino, but there are many rhinos. So you'd be lucky to see a, a rhino. If you do see one, It'll be amazing because they are few and far between in Botswana. Over the years, they've been poached and for a long time, rhinos were kept in a, in a reserve and they were guarded 24 hours a day. Uh, over the years, they've slowly released them in, into the wild. You'll get an antelope called Sitatunga, lives virtually in the water. You get reedbuck. So there's, there's a lot of wildlife to see. Are you in giraffe country? Oh, uh, yes, you'll see. You, you will definitely see giraffe, yes. Okay. They're plenty, they're yeah. plenty. Wild dog. Uh, okay. Crocodiles, you see plenty. Hippos, okay. you'll see hundreds of. Okay. So, yeah. um, I'm trying to think what else. That, uh, what about chimps and uh, orangutans? No, chimps, chimps are not, uh, further north. Uh, East Africa, Central Africa. You'll okay. see baboon, but that's about it. Orangutans are from Asia. Uh, okay. So I apologize for my ignorance, of lack of knowledge fine. about what wildlife no, is in fine. Botswana, but mm. you know, I, I think of going to the zoo and what do I see in the zoo there? And we're fortunate mm. we have a really good zoo here, but it's not like seeing it in the wild. Mm. It, it, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what, Keith, I have really loved our conversation. <laughs> I'll add some video, some video clips and some pictures mm. and things into this. For the folks that are interested in learning more about accessible tours, I will put your contact information in the show notes. So if you're listening to this and, and you'll look down, you'll find the show notes. You will have seen some pictures as we go through this. And we look forward to seeing everybody in the next video. If your subscribe button is red, it's an urgent warning that you need to hit it so that you can subscribe and you won't miss any of the valuable content that's coming up. Thanks, Thank everybody. You very much.